Okay, this is Math 2, Unit 6, Lesson 6, Homework Help. First, some questions here on your packet if you have Form K. Numbers 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, 13, 14, 16, 17, and 20. All right, our first section wants you to find the scale factor when they give you an image length over the pre-image length. And just remember, the image length they're talking about is the new one with the dashed lines, okay? And the pre-image is the solid line there. So looking at number 4 to begin with, we have our image length, which is our dashed line, has a length of 6 right here. So our initial image length is 6, and our pre-image length is 9. That's my other line they gave me there. So I have 6 over 9, and I reduce that down to 2 thirds. And I can tell that this one is a reduction because it's less than one, so I'm making the image smaller from the large one to the smaller one. For number five, I wanted to show that one real quick because it is a little different. We can see my original image is small. My new image is, is uh, going to be larger, so I know I'm going to do an enlargement. But just one little tricky thing on this one, if I do my image length, over my pre-image length. My pre-image length was 4. So I have 4 on the denominator. My image length, though, be careful here, it's not 4, it's 4 plus 4 because I'm extending this line out further. So my new image length is actually 8. And 8 over 4 reduces down to 2, so my scale factor happens to be 2. So in the first one, because I'm less than 1, it's a reduction. And on this one, because I'm greater than 1, it's going to be an enlargement. All right. Look at the next set of questions down here, number 6, 8, and 11. They give you a little sample here how to set this problem up. They're looking at, uh, that says the dilation has a center of 0, 0. Find the image of each point for the given scale factor. So the first number they give you is the point that you're looking at here, 2, comma 3. Those are the points where you solve this problem. Now. Sorry. The scale factor is the number written right here by there, right there, which in this case here happens to be, I'll write it larger for you, D6. So that's going to be the scale factor they want us to multiply by. When they set it up this way, what they did is they took your coordinate for the 2 and they plugged it in there. They took your coordinate for the 3 and they plugged it in there. And they want you to take your scale factor, the 6, and put it here and here to come up with your new coordinates. So 2 times 6 is 12, and 3 times 6 is 18. So using the scale factor of 6, my new coordinate becomes 12, 18. If I look down here at number 11, I want to do the same kind of idea. I look and see that what my scale factor is this time, it is 1 fourth. 1 fourth is my scale factor, just to rewrite what you may not be able to see right there which means I'm going to go ahead and take this point, I'm going to break it apart and do negative 3 times the scale factor for my x value. And for my y value, I'm going to do 5 times my scale factor. And by multiplying this out, I'll find up with my um, new image point from the, dil the dilation I'm creating. So negative 3 times a 1 fourth becomes a negative 3 fourths, that's my x value, and 5 times 1 fourth is 5 fourths, or 1 and 1 fourth if you change that there. So, that is my new point. Or I could write down negative 3 fourths, comma, 1 and 1 fourth. Either way. Okay? I went a little bit out of order there, sorry, that's number 8. Number, number 11, sorry. Number 8 I was going to do as well. This one has a scale factor of 3, that's what this number is right there, scale factor of 3. So I take the coordinates, negative 3 times my scale factor is my x value, and my y value is a negative 2 times my scale factor. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, and negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And so that becomes the new coordinate when I use that scale factor. Looking over to the back side. Starting with number 13, it gives me um, the setup here 
for this problem. It says that the image of a bug, image of bug, it times its actual size. Uh, sorry, the image of a bug is five times its actual size and has a width of 1.5 centimeters. So you want to take the image length and set it equal to my scale factor and the actual length. So when I look back at this problem, it says the image of a bug is five times. Well, the five times is going to be my scale factor. So that's going to go here. Uh, five times actual size. Actual size. Do I know it's actual size? I don't know the actual size. I'm just going to go ahead and call that A for actual. And it has a width of 1.5. So the image has a width of 1.5. So that's my image length is 1.5 equals my scale factor times the actual length. I'm going to use that same sort of setup for uh, most of these other problems in here as well. So now with that in place, I have to basically solve for A. So to solve for A, I will divide both sides by 5. And 5 goes into 1.5, goes into 1, 0 times, put my decimal up right away. And 5 goes into 15 three times. And so I have 3 times that is 15, 0 remaining. So A equals 0.3. And I don't want to leave it just as 0.3 because I am doing some measurement. I notice that it is centimeters, so it's 0.3 centimeters for number 13. When I look at number 14, it's the same type of deal. I'm going to take my image length equal the scale factor times the actual length. It says the image of a worm is four times, so that's my scale factor. Its actual size, I don't know, and has a length of 7 centimeters. And there's my length. So once again, I'll do 7, set it equal to my scale factor, and then times the actual size. So when I solve that out, I solve for A, divide both sides by 4, A equals 7 fourths. And again, I'm looking at centimeters, so I can write centimeters right there. Okay, number 16. We have a dilation map, so we have a triangle, QRS, and we're changing it to Q prime, R prime, S prime. It tells me that QR equals 10. It also tells me that Q prime, Q prime, R, Q prime and R prime, sorry, equal 12. It says if RS, that's from the original triangle, is 12, Let's set this here. Rs equals 12. What is R prime S prime? And that equals X. Well, if you look at what I have here, I have essentially a segment of a triangle and then the dilation. It's the same segment. I have a segment of another triangle. I can set this set up as two ratios and make it a proportion. So really what I have is 10 over 12 equal to my dilation 12 over x. If I reduce this first of all, I can have 5 and a 6. I can cross multiply and end up with 5x equals 6 times 12, which is a lovely number. It's going to be, what is that one, 72? Looking at my notes real quick. Uh, yep, 72. 72. And then to solve for x, I divide both sides by 5. 5 goes into 72, it goes in there one time, 5, subtract, bring down a 2, 5 goes in 22 four times, or 20, bring down a 2, add a decimal, bring down the 0, 5 goes into 20, four times. So in this case here, the value of R prime S prime is 14.4. And all I was doing there was taking the parts and setting it up as a proportion. All right, number 17. It says the dilation of the coordinate grid has center 0, 0, and scale factor, there's my scale factor, 2.5. 2.5. And point A is at 3, comma 7, and just wants to know what is the Y coordinate. So my original Y is 7 times the scale factor, 2.5. And so my new y-coordinate with the scale factor, 7 times 2.5 is 17.5.
number 17. All right, for number 20, first it asks you, and, and this is something you'll, you'll need to be able to do for your unit test as well, it wants you to go ahead and graph the, um, the points that are given. So if I do that real quick for y'all, we have P is at 0, 4, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's point P. I have 6, 6, so this is my point E. I have 4, 0, I have 0, negative 4, and I have a negative 2, 0. So my original Pinta looks like this. Use my key card because I'm on the band trip. Long Beach today. That's my original shape. Something like that. And if I look over here back at the original question, it says that my dilation is 0.5. So because it's less than 1, I know that this is going to be a reduction. I'm going to have a smaller pentagon uh, inside of there. So essentially what I have to do is I have to take every point, 0, 4, 6, 6, and every single one of these, I need to multiply it by 0.5. Or basically reduce in half is the idea. So when I look at P prime, here's P prime, half of 0, or 0 times 0 0.5 is still 0. 4 times 0 0.5, or 4 over 2, is 2. Okay, E prime, half of 6 is 3. The other half of the other 6 is still 3. For N prime, half of 4 is going to be 2, half of 0 is still 0. And for the t, half of 0 is still 0. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. That's my prime. And a prime, half of negative 2, or negative 2 times a half, ends up being a negative 1. And 0 times anything is still 0. So my new coordinates are 0, comma 2, 3, 3, 2, 0, 0, minus 2, and minus 1, 0. And then what I want you to do is basically just graph that in there. So P prime is 0, comma 2, 1, 2. And then my next one, E prime, is at 3, 1, 2, 3. N is at 2, comma 0. A is at 0, comma negative 2. And sorry, T. And then A prime is at negative 1, comma 0. So again, if I graph that out, what I have is something that looks like. There we go. And so I can see it's a, the same image or similar image, and it's been reduced down by half or by 0.5. All right. And that was your lesson. Thanks.